Hello everybody. Today, the Immigration Minister of Canada has made some crucial announcements about the international students, about the postgraduate work permit and also the spousal work permit as well. Just like the last few months, this is in line with the current theme that they want to reduce immigration in Canada. So they're making it much more tougher for international students. The political situation in Canada is such that it can have elections anytime. And so the Liberal government is trying their best to woo the Canadian voters. So all these announcements have one common theme, reduce immigration. Frankly speaking, if I was in India as a student and I was thinking of moving to Canada as an international student at this point of time, I would not think of doing that. We will talk in detail about all these announcements in this video. So please watch this video till the end. Okay, let's first talk about the change that would impact thousands of international students who are currently studying in Canada. We're talking about the change in the eligibility criteria of the postgraduate work permit visa. Now for PGWP, actually they have two different announcements. The first announcement is for the three-year PGWP, which you get after you complete a minimum of two years of uh, your study. So they have said that you'd be eligible for that three-year PGWP if you graduate from a field of study linked to occupations in long-term shortage. Now, there are many questions here. Which are those occupations? It's not listed here. When is it going to get applied? Again, not listed here. Would it be later this year? We don't have answers to many questions like that. And hopefully later in the week or maybe next week, we would get more answers. So that's the first big change. If they apply it later this year, that's going to shake the world of thousands of international students. There's one more announcement for PGWP, which I believe would not be that difficult to qualify. They've announced that everyone applying for PGWP after November 1st, 2024, you would need to demonstrate that you have good hold over English or French because from 1st of November, you would need to demonstrate that you have a minimum score of CLB 7 in English or French language test if you're a university graduate and CLB 5 if you are a college graduate. I know this could be a problem for some students who don't have a strong hold in either of these languages, English or French, most probably English. But then again, a valid question that if you can't speak good English, can you really expect to work and have a good future in Canada? So for most of the students, this might not be very difficult, but the government expects that this measure will reduce the PGWP by 175,000 in next three years, which means every year, 50 to 60,000 PGWP would be rejected only because of this eligibility requirement change. Okay, now again, there might be many open questions. For example, would it be the academics or the general tests or what would be the validity of the test if you have passed it in the last two years, then it may still be valid. Would you have to reappear for the test? Many open questions. And again, we can get to know them as and when they clarify it. Okay, next announcement is for all of the future international students of Canada because last year they announced a cap on the total number of study permits that would be issued each year. For 2024, it was 485,000 and now they have further reduced this for 2025 by 10% and that would stay for 26 as well, which means that for 2025 and 26, the total number of study permits issued would be 437,000. You still might think that 437,000 is a very big number, but when you compare it with 2023, they've reduced it now by 45%, which means that the number of students coming in in 2025 would be almost half of what came in in 2023. So now you understand the magnitude of this announcement. The next big announcement is for the spousal open work permits. Now, if you're an international student in Canada, and if your spouse wants a spousal open work permit, there would be stricter eligibility criteria. Your spouse would only be eligible for that work permit if you're studying for a master's program, that too, with a duration of at least 16 months. So if you're coming over for a one year study, then your spouse won't be getting a spousal work permit. So if I'm not wrong, until last year, 
almost everyone was allowed to apply for a spousal work permit. Even if you were coming here for a bachelor's program, even if it was a one year course, most of those programs actually allowed spousal open work permits. But now it is only restricted to master's degree, that too, only if the duration is at least 16 months. Okay, there's one more update that I wanna share with you. I'm just gonna read it out. The 2025-26 study permit intake cap will include masters and doctoral students who will now have to submit a provincial or territorial attestation letter. This was not required earlier. We will be reserving approximately 12% of allocation spaces for these students in recognition of the benefits they bring to the Canadian labor market. Guys, the message is very clear that they want reduced number of temporary students here. The total number of uh, temporary residents in Canada, which includes the people on tourist visa, people on work permit and study visa, the study permit as well, was around 6.5 to 7% and they want to bring it down to 5% or even lower, which means that there'd be hundreds and thousands of temporary um, foreign workers, international students who would need to go back to their home countries. Now, of course, they cannot say it in open words, but the message is very, very, very clear that they don't want the immigration levels to go higher. And actually, he also hinted about the immigration levels plan, which they would be actually uh, putting into the parliament and disclosing it on 1st of November. And for the first time, they would actually include the details, the numbers, the plans for the next three years. Usually it was only for the permanent residents. Now they would also include the temporary foreign workers and the students, the international students as well. So guys, we'll need to know a lot about their plans on 1st of November when they put forward this plan. But there are a lot of chances that this government might not stay there after next year. So you never know that even after that, things might change. But that's it for this video, guys. Uh, we have many open questions. Hopefully, they'll clarify in the uh, days to come. You can put your comments, your queries down in the comment section below. If I have answers to them, I'll try to uh, reply to most of the queries. Uh, I'm not a registered immigration consultant or a lawyer, so please don't take it as, uh, as an immigration advice or something. I make these videos just to explain these details in layman terms to you. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button. If you want more these kind of videos, then please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.